Coal is one of the most relied on energy sources in the world, but it's also one of the dirtiest fossil fuels. Now a groundbreaking Canadian technology may change that, and that could mean the world's biggest energy consumers will be able to cut carbon emissions. CCTV's Christian Yeo has more. It fueled the Industrial Revolution and remains the planet's number one source of power. But coal is the biggest contributor to global CO2 emissions. And with carbon reduction targets set around the globe, coal will have to clean up its act. A challenge for power companies and governments everywhere. Coal has suffered a bad reputation as being a dirty type of fossil fuel. But power stations like this one are starting to harness technology to make the burning process much cleaner, to give coal a new lease of life. Every aspect of the entire operation is controlled right out of the control room here. The Boundary Dam power plant in Saskatchewan is home to the world's first working clean coal technology. Thanks to a process called carbon capture and storage, 90% of carbon dioxide and 100% of sulfur can be secured and stopped from entering the atmosphere. We've got an abundant supply of um, low-cost uh, coal right on our doorstep, and we really want to continue to make use of that resource. This project uh, is a game-changer. What's happening in this building really could change the way the world burns coal. This is the carbon capture plant, and it's where sulfuric acid and carbon dioxide are extracted from the coal burning process, and those byproducts are then sold on the open market. So not only is this carbon capture plant helping protect the environment, it's also helping the company make more money. There is some controversy over where this liquefied CO2 goes. Most from this plant is sold to oil drillers who use it for enhanced oil recovery, a sort of fracking for oil. Some environmentalists say that's just passing on the potential to pollute elsewhere. There's also concern about leakage when the CO2 is sent deep underground for long-term storage. This well goes nearly 3.4 kilometers straight down. Research is ongoing to see whether CO2 can be stored underground and underwater safely and what happens while it's down there. We're able then to sample it and see how the changes to the fluids you know, might be happening. And also it will give us information on how the CO2 has migrated at what concentrations, at what saturations, the CO2 has reached the well. Thousands more facilities like boundary dams are needed to make a dent in global emissions. So far, just 55 projects are in existence worldwide. Most of them are in the US, China or Canada, but other countries are looking. China, Norway, uh, Australia, any country that has coal is interested in what we're doing because it really is a lens into the future. And then we have countries that are emerging that simply can't afford to build a nuclear plant or go into renewables in a big way, so they have a, a large source of coal. A United Nations report claims China and the U.S. must work closely on carbon capture development. Almost all coal and gas plants in China will need carbon capture if the world is to reduce its carbon footprint. Christian Yeo, CCTV, Boundary Dam, Saskatchewan, Canada.